Two weeks ago, like Becky said, we talked about the history of the Toltecs and the ancient wisdom. So if you missed any of the talk, I'm going to do a little bit of a review and then get into the next part of this. This book is based on the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. This is the history of Toltec ancient wisdom, where man becomes God, where we become the gods and goddesses that we are. And that's what this lends to. That's what the... The book was all about that Don Miguel Ruiz and the Ancient Ones have been teaching through this format. We've heard it many different ways, but this is this format. We talked about the smoky mirror and the fog that exists within us and between us to recognize each of ourselves as gods. And that most of the time, that's what's separating us. It's nothing but illusion anyway that separates us and the fog that happens in between us is what keeps us separate and what keeps us separate from that God within us. The fog within ourselves, the fog between us is the things that make us feel ungodly, unknown to each other, unwilling to look into each other's eyes and embrace each other as gods and goddesses. We talked about the domestication of the planet with all the social rules and regulations that underlie the agreements we've made as a society, and these agreements are the things that run us. This whole book is based on the premise that we have agreed to all the different things and notions that have been told to us by one person or another, or groups of people, governments, rules, regulations, even lending to holidays and how we celebrate our love. These are agreements that we've all bought into, and some of them serve us, and some of them disserve us. The first agreement was to be impeccable with your word, how our word is magic and creates absolutely, how the word impeccable itself means without sin, and in this book he likened it to anything that goes against the self as being a sin. We've also talked about sin being missing the mark, and the terminology of ripe or unripe. We talked about how our word, which is absolute creation, can be a double-edged sword. It can be magic or it can be black magic. And create, it can create all that you want or can create you to live in misery. And that gossip is black magic at its worst and is poison. Ultimately, knowing how to be impeccable with your word is to use your energy in the direction of truth and love. So when we be impeccable with our word, we are always using our word in truth and in love. And just breathe into that. And that's the premise of being impeccable with our word. The second agreement was don't take things personally. How do we do that when things seem to be personal to us? We have to breathe into this and know that this is about them. This is about what's going on in them. We have the opportunity always to make that agreement with ourselves and say, yep, it's about me. And this, is, this agreement lends to us to free us because this is about freedom. This is a path to freedom. And that when we take things personally, we're taking in their own garbage. We're taking in their garbage as our own. It's never about you. It's always about them. My stuff is my stuff. Your stuff is your stuff. When I take things personally, I make your stuff about me and vice versa. They also talked about taking things personally within yourself. We all have those voices within us. They talked about the voices as the metote, that chatter in our minds. And sometimes we get our feelings hurt by our own selves. We gotta breathe into that and never take it personally either and just understand that some of the agreements that we've made in our lives have caused us to have these different voices chattering away at us with some negative garbage about us. And the moment we buy into going, that's wrong. That's the voice that knows me inside myself. That's the one who knows I'm worthless. I'm um, um, inept, I can't do this or that. Breathe and understand that that was an agreement that somewhere along the line that part of yourself made with what the input they were receiving from society, from parents, from brothers, sisters, from whatever, and to not take it personally. Keeping the agreement with yourself to not take things personally will keep you out of their clutches and assist you in remembering you are the dreamer in your own dream and no one knows you like you do. If folks are doing things against you, it's about their poison, not yours. And it's about breathing love into this. Very difficult sometimes. Jesus was a master at this. He's who I go to in my go-to guy when I see the, another human being that walked this planet that mastered love in a good way. 
And, and he could have taken it personally. They, they, actually, they crucified the guy. So it, it's, it lends to us to breathe into this and to know that it's never about us to just go with the flow, keep our hearts open as much as we can, and to love in this moment and love right here and keep this heart chakra as open as we can. The gift of this agreement is immunity to the poisons of others, whether ill-intended or not. You don't take their garbage in. You don't have to smell the stench of their own garbage. What you can do is instead bring perfume, bring the flowering fragrance of your love so that it may enhance their world and help them realize where they're, where they're at in the moment. So as we move on, we go to the second, I mean, to the third agreement. That was a quick review. So if you weren't here, it's on YouTube or... Uh, what do we call it? Thank you. Thank you. All the use. So if you want to get that, you can. If you want to read this book, I invite you to because it's a very simple book. It's very short. It's got big words. You can read it five times in one day. And it will really shift inside. I really enjoy doing the Handbook to Higher Consciousness series, but it's very heady. And we're doing a class right now on Mondays, and we've all been having great experiences with it. And all of them lend to the same things. Truth will always marry truth. As we do the four agreements, this is coming from a place of recognizing the agreements that we've made in our heads. Again, I'm using the word Brian used last week because I, re I really liked that little sentence about who we let rent space in our bodies, who we let rent space in our minds. Well, every time we make an agreement about what they said about us, we're letting them be the landlords in our own bodies. So this very third agreement is make no assumptions or don't make assumptions. The problem with assumptions is we believe them to be true. We take our wallet out, we buy it and said, yep, they're right. Or we're right. Because when we make assumptions about something, we're naturally assuming that it is a fact and it's truth. And it's, it is one of the errors in our own ways because as we went into the meditations, we went into meditation today and invited people to look at the assumptions they've made throughout their lives and whether they serve them or disserve them. Well, just speaking from my perspective, every time I've made an assumption, it's hurt. It's never really lent me to love, led me to love, it's led me to pain. We make assumptions about what they're doing, thinking, then we take it personally and then react by sending emotional poison. So there's so many different variations of assumptions we can make. We've got to look into it and see what we're assuming about them. And I don't need to go over that old cliche line of what happens when we assume because it's, it's even more than that. It's more than that. What we're doing is we're hurting ourselves. We're stabbing ourselves in our own heart. We're stabbing our own creation. We're making the dream of hell instead of the dream of heaven. And we have a right to dream of heaven. We are the dreamers in our dream. So making an assumption always sets us up for drama. Now, when we look at the word drama and dream, they're kind of similar, similar words. The dream and the drama can be the same at any given point, or we can have this dream free of drama. One of the things about this agreement is as we make no assumptions, we get to have the dream without the drama. And if you want to be dramatic, I'm sure Philip and Rachel can hook you up with their, their theater group. They can do that. You can be dramatic on purpose. All the world is a stage. But we want to be drama-free in our own life and create a dream of love, create a dream of joy, create a dream of abundance, create a dream of receiving each other without the fog in between us, knowing that we are all one. One heart, one mind, one soul in the, in the eyes of the creator, which are our eyes. We are the creators of this dream, and we all have our little dreams along the way. And when we make assumptions about things, we thwart our dreams in a nanosecond. We stop all creation, and we cause ourselves to feel pain. Most sadness and drama that we have lived in was rooted in making assumptions and then, again, taking it personally. All those negative voices, or again, what he calls the motote, creates tons of chaos, which causes us to misinterpret and misunderstand everything. How many times in your own life, and this isn't a shout-out answer unless you would like to shout it out, have you made an assumption and it caused chaos in your life? Have you ever made an assumption about anything that caused bliss? I haven't. And we'll, we'll talk into positive assumptions in a minute, too, because that can happen, too. But we make assumptions in relationships that they should know how I feel or what I want. And when I do that, what I'm doing is I'm setting up an expectation and they're always going to fail my expectation. 
when I assume that you know how to love me and I haven't shared with you how I like to be loved, then when you show up loving me the way you think I want to be loved, I'm going to be hurt. I'm going to be let down. I'm going to feel unloved. It's all because I didn't share it with you. I didn't ask. I didn't tell you. We will only see and hear what we want to, which will keep us in the agreements of our hell rather than the agreements of our heaven. So we have a choice at all times to make a new agreement. And that's, again, what this book is lending to. It's saying, what agreements would you like to have? And if you follow these four basic agreements, it's going to help you get rid of the other ones that are living, having you live in hell as opposed to having you live in heaven. Making assumptions hurts. Bottom line. Again, has anyone ever really felt wonderful out of the assumption that you made? Two people may have a different feeling or thought on what marriage is. When we assume that their view is our view, we're sending ourselves to be let down, to argue, and to fight. So if I get married, and I've been married, and I had a wonderful marriage, whether we got divorced or not, it's irrelevant because not everybody knows the whole dynamics of that. But my point is, we both had two different perspectives of marriage. Now, luckily for us, we did communicate a lot. And some of the things that we thought we, we realized were different in our communication of realizing what each view of marriage was, we were able to come to a common ground and understand each other a little bit so that we never fought, we talked. That is what this is about. The moment we make assumptions, and especially in a marriage, in a relationship, there's all many, many, many kinds of marriages. Even friends are married to an extent. We're all married to each other to an extent. When we make assumptions of how the other person should show up, we are gonna let ourselves fall fail and be resentful and hurt every single time because we never asked for what we wanted. We never came to that common ground of what we thought a marriage was, what we thought a relationship was, what it held for each other, what point of view we held about the agreement of marriage. All these things will happen when we stop making assumptions. When we do make the assumptions and then they show up differently, then we justify our feelings in order to feel safe within the agreements that we've made with ourselves. We make our rational mind do all the thinking and in programming that we've been running on. So as that part, that, that line is important. It landed in my body. Then we justify our feelings in order to feel safe with the agreements we have made in our rational mind and in the programming we have been running on. So when they don't show up the way we assumed they should, we have to now go into all those agreements of why they're wrong. Because we never want to be wrong in our body. And it's sometimes you just have to realize that in making the assumption, it's not about right or wrong. It's about am I living in a heaven state of mind, state of heart, state of being, or am I living in a hell state of mind, state of heart, state of being. And when I can communicate with you what those nuances are that are different from me and different from you, then we can join in heaven whether we agree or disagree. We're finding our common ground by the being willing to communicate with each other, by being willing to make no more assumptions and ask. We don't have to justify our feelings anymore and then blame the other person because they didn't show up the way we assumed they should. When we make these assumptions, our mind fills in the gap of information we were lacking and usually does it in a negative way. I am the king of this. I have done this way too much. The terrorist in my mind has just made stuff up. Just, I mean, I'm a good writer, but holy moly, I, I don't want to be a Stephen King writer. <laughs> and he's wrote some really wonderful stuff, but the terrorist in me will make up a story far beyond anything that happened or anything that was going on in that other person. And I will just sit there and make up all the different things of how they're out to get me, how they don't love me, fill in the blank of hell. Whatever hell looks like for you. Mine has looked different. Yours has looked different. But we all have done it in some way, shape, or form. I'm going to kind of go out on a limb and suggest that we may all have done it in some way, shape, or form. As we do this filling in the gaps, all we're doing is hurting ourselves. We're beating ourselves up with our own mind because nothing happened. There was no thing that happened when we made the assumption. If somebody came up and slapped me, then I could pretty figure out that they slapped me and it hurt. Now, if I assumed why they slapped me, I'm going to be slapping myself for the rest of the day. They only slapped me one time. And it may have been out of their hurt, may have been out of pain, may be out of fear. All those things underlie why somebody would come up and slap me. 
But the what I did for the rest of the time in my head was me just continuing the slapping. Maybe there was a mosquito on my face and I didn't know. And I made all those assumptions about how they didn't love me or how w terrible I was as a human being so they wanted to, uh, to slap me. Even if we make assumptions to the positive, we are still living in a fantasy instead of truth. So here's an example of this one, that one that he uses right in the book. You're walking down the mall, and you see a pretty girl or a pretty guy, and they look at you and smile, and you think, they like me, they want me. And then you go from that point, and you start fantasizing about maybe even marriage. And all they were doing was saying hi. Wanting to shine their light and be another human being that is able to look you in the eye. But it was an assumption that we made. And in that assumption, I'm still not living in truth. I'm still not. This whole book is a guide to be free. And at the end of it, we'll talk about that at the end. I get ahead of myself sometimes. Freedom is a goal that we want in here. The illusion of freedom that we have out here in society is a reflection of the places that we keep ourselves in prison. And most of the time we're keeping ourselves in prison with the agreements that we've made to stay in prison. And assuming things is a lock and key. I mean, is a lock without a key. We'll just lock you right in that little cage. The moment we ask and open up to asking people what they're wanting, what they're thinking, how they're feeling, we assume that everybody believes like we believe. We assume some that we're, somewhere along the line we made an agreement that it was unsafe to ask a question. Maybe it happened in your childhood. Maybe it happened in class. A lot of times there's some really crappy teachers out there, unfortunately, that you will go up to ask a question and they, they make you feel stupid for it. And then somewhere in your line, you make an, in your life, you make an agreement Asking these questions are unsafe. There's a lot of wonderful teachers that have said there's no stupid questions. The only stupid question is the one unasked. Those kind of teachers help us. I've got a stupid question. Sure. <laughs> What's the difference between assumptions and beliefs? Assumption is that you would, and this is going to be an inside journey for you always, but in my body, assuming something is something that I create in my mind without any facts behind it. And a belief is, for me, as we say even in the Bible with Jesus and in, in, in the laws of attraction that believing is seeing, that what I can believe in my mind, in my body, in, in my heart mind, it will be the fruit of, of my own labors. Belief systems are interesting. Under the laws of manifestation, the laws of attraction, the laws of crow in, in Native American natural law, Whatever you believe to be true will manifest for you. That's why when it comes to religion, it doesn't matter what your belief system is. If you wholeheartedly believe in that with your heart, that magic will work for you. But when I assume something to be so, I don't even have anything based on, I'm not perhaps even in a belief system about it. I'm just assuming it because somebody else told me to do it and I made that agreement. Okay, well that must be fact because Bob said so. So many different religions have taken people astray by people assuming that they knew more than we know. Yes, thank you. And asking that question is very powerful. We assume that everyone sees life the way we do, thinks the way we think, loves the way we do, feels the way we do, even judges the way we do. And, in it, and it goes on in the book to say even abuses the way we do. And none of us would like to think of ourselves as abusers. But somewhere in us, we've the I am thing, if you've ever read that there, it talks about that in there, that within us is everything. And there's been some times where we've been the predator and sometimes we've been the prey, the abuser or the abused. But how I've been a sinner isn't maybe how you've been a sinner. How I've missed the mark isn't maybe how you've missed the mark. So when I assume that you sin the way I sin, I'm, I'm making an assumption. I have to ask you that. I have to know that I'm making an agreement within my head that's assuming that you think exactly the way I do about everything in life. Why are we all here? We would just be clones and robots. 
that was one of the grandest things about this creation. The Tower of Babel lends to that about all the different languages that got created because people were too, too stuck in one thing. This was the uniqueness of our individuality. We do have a fingerprint again for a reason. We do have a voice print for a reason. No two voices are exactly the same either. Even though there's very many people who can do impressions, if they were to be measured scientifically, the science would know that, no, that was somebody trying to sound like that other voice. That is our uniqueness, and with that, we have the, the idea within us to make an agreement by asking, by finding out the truth of what that person is thinking or feeling, and not assuming that they're going to think or feel about life the exact way I do. It causes us also to be afraid of ourselves. It keeps us separate. For if we stand out, how will we feel? We may be judged. So if I stand out in who I am and all my wonder, and you don't agree with that, and I assume it's unsafe for me to stand out, I'm not going to stand out. If I assume I'm going to be punished for speaking my truth, I'm not going to speak my truth. If I assume that I'm going to be flogged, crucified, fill in the blank for being me, I'm not going to want to be me. What, what would that be, heaven or hell? It's been hell for my, many of us. I've done it. I'd rather live in heaven. This is a place we reject ourselves before others have even rejected us. I have been rejected more by my own self than any other human being on the planet. I am in more integrity with every other human being on the planet than I have been with my own self. Because of those times that I rejected myself assuming things, making assumptions that I wasn't good enough. We make more assumptions about ourselves than we do about others. We either overestimate or underestimate our own abilities without going within and asking the questions, is this within the scope of my ability? Is this what I really want? We've got to breathe into that for a minute. I do, because sometimes in underestimating myself, it will make me not attempt. And in overestimating myself, I may hurt myself spiritually, mentally, physically, or emotionally. If I think I can lift 500 pounds and I go to lift 500 pounds, I may pull some things that I don't want, want to be pulled. But if I don't think I can lift 50 pounds, I may never move the couch to the other side of the room where I wanted it. There's so many different ways, and that's just a silly little example of it. But we won't, we'll, we'll stay stuck. We'll stay in hell again because we won't even challenge ourselves because we're not willing to answer the question. Ask the question, I mean. We have to be willing to ask ourselves, can I do this? And listen. Somebody said yes with practice. If we're willing to answer, I mean ask, and listen for the answer, the truth within ourselves, sometimes the answer may be no. You can't run a three-minute mile anymore, Mark. Well, I don't know if I ever could. <laughs> but I used to run fast. I used to do cross-country, and I ran 10 miles a day, and I was working on my speed more and more and more. In this moment, the answer is no. I also can't lift the weights that I used to be able to lift in my younger body. So there's a limitation on me in this current moment that I must simply be aware of because if I overestimate myself, I'm going to hurt myself. And then I'm going to feel failure. And in that kind of failure, I will stop. I will attempt nothing more. I will be dead. I will be in hell. If we don't meet the expectations we set upon ourselves, we judge, take it personally, and again, hell instead of heaven. How many times have we taken it personally when we failed at something and instead of just realizing, let me try something different or attempt something different. Sometimes that try word is just a try word and sometimes it's a heavy word of, well, I'll try. It's like, well, what did Yoda say? No try, do. So just breathe into that and understand that we have to ask ourselves. In relationships, we, we assume that we can change people with our love. We only want to see them in the light that we see them. And then when they don't change, because only we can change ourselves, I can love you till Sunday, or till Saturday, since this is Sunday. And you may never, never, never change. Only you can change what you want to change about yourself. But what happens, and we talked about this a second ago, is that when they don't change, and I had all these assumptions about who they were and how they are and how to love them, 
Now I'm going to have to justify in my head. I'm going to start blaming them so that I can feel just for where they didn't show up in my loving. I mean, in my assumption of how they need to be loved and how I should love them. We assume as a little bit. Then if something happens outside of what we assume, again, we're justifying them wrong or right. We can blame them for our emotional poison. All things occur like this when we make assumptions. The key is to release yourself from this old agreement within your mind is to communicate. Ask. With clear communication, you free yourself from the programming and habits underlying all your pain. You will change every single relationship in your life because you will have become clear without having to make assumptions. It will also give you the power to say, this is what I want. What do you want? How many times do we say that? It's very hard for us sometimes as human beings to say, this is what I want. There's so much guilt on it. Or to ask somebody, what do you want? Without judgment, without making any assumptions about what they're going to say to you and just allowing them to be them. Allowing them to show up the way they show up on purpose. It's their life. As we practice this agreement, we become more and more impeccable with our word Better and better at taking nothing personally, for we have assumed nothing. We have opened our hearts to the truth and to our truth. When you make this agreement a habit, you transform your whole dream. Magic will again happen in your life. What you will need will come to you more easily because spirit will be moving through you freely. This is the mastery of love, the mastery of gratitude, and the mastery of life. This is the goal of the Toltec path to personal freedom. As we move into fourth agreement, Always do your best. The fourth agreement is about the action of the first three. So being impeccable with my word, taking nothing personally, and making no assumptions, as I look at always doing my best, it will lend to me always doing my best at those. And knowing that under any circumstance, do your best. No more, no less. It is your personal best, not compared to by measures of what others believe your best is. If their best is they can run five miles and your best is that you can run four miles and you can pay yourself unworthy because you didn't run five miles, if you pushed yourself to run that five miles, again, you might hurt yourself. You might not be here to run three miles the next day. It's about knowing where you're at and doing your best, keeping in mind that your best is never going to be the same from one moment to another. Everything is constantly changing and is alive. So sometimes your best will be of high quality and sometimes your best will be of low quality. And it's just breathe into that and understand. One of the, one of the things that used, he used in here is your best will be different when you're healthy as when you're opposed to when you're sick. Your best will be diff better, different than when you're sober as opposed to when you're drunk. And that's a real quick, good one to see because, well, if you've ever just, I won't even go on if you've been drunk, if you've ever seen a drunk being drunk. Were they at their best in that moment? No. But the next day, they might have been the most brilliant person that you've ever met in your life. And, and you were astounded that it was the drunk that you met the night before that's standing before you, this brilliant. At any given moment, our best is going to change. Everyday moods affect our best. We'll be better when we're happy and feeling wonderful as opposed to when we're feeling sad, angry, or jealous. In these everyday moods, our best can change from one moment to another, one hour to an hour, one day to day. Building the habits of these four agreements are going to always help us. Your best will become better than it used to be. So as we look at these four agreements and practice, and instead of that practice makes perfect, I'd like to change it to what David Roth says, to practice makes progress, because it, it comes with no yuck on it. It just is like, yes, I am progressing. I am moving forward. I am getting better at this because I'm practicing it. So just like with the handbook to higher consciousness that we talked about where Nirvana isn't a goal to achieve, it's more an experience, that cosmic consciousness center, is to breathe into it and to understand that the more I practice all these principles from all the different writers, from all the different teachers, from all the different masters, from all the different yous that are out there, from all the different me's, every one of us has something to offer each other. Practice makes progress. So as I deal with the agreements that I've made within myself, and realize most of the agreements have held me down, the more I always do my best with these other three agreements, the more I'm going to get better and better and better at them. If you do less than your best, you bring on fr self-judgment, frustration, 
anxiety, guilt, and regret if you do less than your best. Not, I didn't run that full mile today. If I did my best, and that was three quarters of a mile, then I can go home knowing I did my best. And if I run three quarters of a mile every day in practice, I'm going to hit that mile maybe on the fifth day or whatever. But it's about doing your best and owning it and giving yourself the solace and the recognition for doing your best from whatever it is. There's musicians in here. Do you think they were at their peak the very first day they picked up a guitar? You think Melanie played the way she does the very first day she hit the key on the piano? Everything took practice. All of it took practice. We practiced in the choir the very first time. If you've ever been here, it doesn't always sound like it does on Sundays. <laughs> It's the practice, but the commitment to doing our best and having fun with it along the way is what brings the melodies out that we like, brings the harmonies out in life, no matter what music is that's being played. Any circumstance that is before you, you have to do your best. There was a man who wanted to transcend his suffering, so he went to a Buddhist temple to find a master to help him. He went to the master and said, Master, if I meditate four hours a day, how long will it take me to transcend? The master looked at him and said, if you meditate four hours a day, perhaps you'll transcend in 10 years. Thinking he could do better, the man said, oh, master, what if I meditated eight hours a day? How long would it take me to transcend then? The master looked at him and said, if you meditate eight hours a day, perhaps you'll transcend in 20 years. But why will it take me longer if I meditate more, the man asked. The master replied, you're not here to sacrifice your joy or your life. You're here to live, to be happy, and to love. If you can do your best in two hours of meditation, but you spend eight hours instead, you will only grow tired, miss the point, and you won't enjoy your life. Do your best, and perhaps you will learn that no matter how long you meditate, you can live, love, and be happy. When we talked about this again when we did the handbook to higher consciousness, and I just mentioned that a moment ago, about it's not about an achievement, it's about the experience of it. Enlightenment is not a goal to achieve, because that will set, up us, set us up for failure and dismay, but as we experience these moments of bliss, the gift of life is brought to us and we get to create the world we want. The more we do our best, the better we are to ourselves, to our families, to our communities. We do our best because we love it, not because we're expecting a reward. Most get caught up in the opposite. They only do their best when there's a reward at the end of it, when there's that trophy or that payday. Some of us go to work and we, we're missing the whole week of joy in our lives because we're only waiting for the payday in Friday. Do your best, whatever your job is. I used to pump out porta johns for a living. It was a crappy job, no <laughs> pun intended. But you know what? When I left that porta john, it was as clean as it could be. You may still not want to have it eaten in there, but I did my best for four bucks an hour pumping out porta johns. It's always about no matter what life, if you're the floor sweeper, do your best. It doesn't matter what your job in life is. If the, bu the, bu blah, 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 the bubonic plague itself started because of trash. Thank God for the trash guys and the people that do that kind of work. And if they do their best, we get to live in a clean society. So it's never about judgment. It's just about being understanding that if you do your best, you're going to lend freedom to all of us in different ways. We'll find more peace, more joy, more happiness on the journey, create more of the genes that we want. Action is about living fully. Inaction is about denying life. So as we let go of the past, we allow ourselves the action to be fully alive in the moment and enjoy the dream of what happens in the now. Dreams and ideas without action stay manifested, I mean unmanifested. We're all born with the right to be happy. It's our lives, it's our, it is our right to live our lives and to enjoy, to take chances and to revel in the goals we have set. This engravement will enhance the other three as we simply do our best all the time, no more, no less. Breathe into this, or I invite you to breathe into this. If you don't want to breathe, don't breathe. <laughs> I'm breathing into this more and more and more because I wish I read this book a long time ago. Even though it says stuff that I know, it's so gentle. It's so gentle on your heart. There's, no, there's nothing that your head can get confused with. Because some of the other stuff, sometimes that rational part of our thinking came like, I'm doing it wrong. This is so easy and so gentle and so loving to just realize that we're making these agreements with ourselves. There won't be any need for guilt or self-judgment because we're always doing our best. We don't have to beat ourselves up because we did our best. 
I did my best at being impeccable with my word today. I did my best at taking nothing personally today. I did my best at making no assumptions today. And I do my best at always doing my best. That's all we can ever ask from ourselves at any given moment in life is to always do these best, do our best. These four agreements is a Toltec way of life. For them, there are no leaders, no followers. There's only you and your personal truth. It's a way to heaven on earth, and it's their belief. It's the way to live wise, wild, and free. So before I close today, or as I close today, I'm going to read a prayer of freedom right out of this book. And I think as we go into what we're going into, this will assist us all to breathe, to stay in our heart space, to know that we are all one. We are all creators of this wonderful journey, and then each of us has a personal journey. Today, creator of the universe, we ask that you come to us and share with us a strong communion of love. We know that your real name is love, that to have a communion with you means to share the same vibration, the same frequency that you are, because you are the only thing that exists in the universe. Today, help us be like you are, to love life, to be life, to be love. Help us love the way you love with no conditions, no expectations, no obligations, without any judgments. Help us love and accept ourselves without any judgments because when we judge ourselves, we find ourselves guilty and feel the need to be punished. Help us love everything you create unconditionally, especially other human beings, especially those who live around us all our relations, our relatives, and people we try so hard to love because we know that when we reject them, we reject ourselves. And when we reject ourselves, we reject you. Help us to love others just the way they are with no conditions. Help us to accept them the way they are without judgments because if we judge them, we find them guilty. We blame them and we have the need to punish them. Today we ask to clean our hearts of any emotional poisons that we may have. Free our minds from any judgment so that we can live in complete peace and complete love. Today is a very special day. Today as we open our hearts to love again so that we can tell each other, I love you without any fear and really mean it. Today we offer ourselves to you. Come to us, use our voices, use our eyes, Use our hands and use our hearts to share ourselves in a communion of love with everyone. Today, Creator, help us to be just like you are. Thank you for everything that we received this day, especially for the freedom to be who we are. And so it is. Home and talk with us. One, two, three, four. Love. Just gentle as a rose And love Can conquer any war It's time to take a stand Brothers and sisters join hands We've got to let love rule Transcends all space and time And love Can make a little child smile Can't you see That things won't go wrong Oh, we've got to be strong We can't do this alone We've got to let love rule
Let's all.